Hello everyone, I'm back with the long anticipated video taking a look at this iPod Classic. Now if you're not aware of the history, I ended up buying this thing way back in April, I think, for this much from this listing. And I was going to take a look at it and unbox it for my 1,000 subscriber special. Right now it's looking more like it would be maybe a 2,000 sub special. Thank you all very much for watching and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Now you might ask yourself, why did you pick this specific iPod, this specific listing of the countless Chinese iPod listings out there? This listing in particular claims to be a 128 gigabyte iPod Classic 6th generation upgraded with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. What really got my attention was the actual listing description. I've got the listing up right here. Now the seller says, originally an 80 gig sixth generation, now fully refurbished. This iPod is going to be using a micro SD with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. And most interesting of all, a Tarkin iFlash adapter. It might not seem like anything special for the seller to be claiming they're using an iFlash adapter, but every single Chinese iPod like this uses these adapters. Hold on, I'm gonna go grab it actually. Sorry, I had to go grab something. What makes this listing special is every single Chinese iPod I've ever seen uses these adapters. Now I bought this listing and this is actually how it came in the packaging, which I do appreciate the freebies, but why? And here is the actual product There is a scrap logic board. It's a 5.5, missing its battery connection terminal and all of the buttons. Oh Lord, that is a house fire right there. Thank you for sending this. Thank you so much for sending this. I can't wait to plug it in. I really appreciate that. My God. To the point I was making earlier, this is the adapter and the battery. I've seen basically every single one of these Chinese iPods use. They really package these things like they hate the people buying them. Yeah, these things. I'm pod, I'm pod. Anyways, I bought this because I was curious if it actually comes with an iFlash adapter and this specific brand, Transcend 128 gig, a V30 micro SD card, or one of these, which I'll look at in a future video. So yeah, we're gonna unbox this thing, take it apart and see what's inside. First of all, let's take a look at the box here. Pretty nice for a replica. The font is just terrible. On the back here, it's not the worst thing in the world. There's no misspellings as far as I can see compared to a real genuine box. The real one has a raised iPod font for the capacity is not completely awful. All legitimate iPod classics sold through Apple come with this sticker. This sticker is assigned to each iPod with the serial number, but I'm not gonna take too much time taking a look at the boxes. So I've had this thing since April 22nd. I've been waiting since then to open it for you guys. I've been highly anticipating this. I hope you have too. I'm not sure if real boxes have uh, that much shake to them, but there, you can definitely feel something moving around in there. Let's get into it. It's still incredible. How All right. And there she is. Would you look at that? Take a look. This feels, feels like a takeout box. And here we've got your standard new cable, a somewhat convincing one amp power adapter. It's got some heft to it. To my surprise, we have era correct Apple headphones. And then I'm not sure if it's replica packaging. I'm not sure if these are replica earbuds. Now that that's out of the way, we're gonna take a look at the iPod itself. Very well might be dead. The serial number is printed in a different size and it looks like it's bold. Reminds me of those Asurion refurbished iPhones. I'd be very impressed if the serial number on the back plate actually matched the serial number on the board. Let's go ahead and power it on. And it's already on with the full charge. So this is actually a seventh generation board on 2.0.1. Curiously, a Mac was used to restore it. It is a Chinese board. The serial number ends in R2C5. Backplate does not actually match the serial number on the motherboard, which is unfortunate. I want to plug this in to my computer. There we go. Let's go ahead and put some music on here. Cool. 
It works fine. It works fine. We all know what we're here for. I want to open this. Let's open this. Oh boy. So I, I broke the... Whoa! Shh. Ah, who could have guessed? Who could have guessed? Dang! All right. Headphone jack is not brand new. So the seller did say that the headphone jack is refurbished. That's all good. This is certainly not an eye flash. It is certainly not a 3000 milliamp hour battery. That's for sure. And at the very worst, it was intentionally misleading. M.2 128 from a made up brand, not even a real brand. Generic 128. And obviously it looks identical to the adapter unboxed on camera, absolutely identical. Here's the battery from this iPod, the battery that I just unboxed. It's the same battery. So I'm actually gonna send the seller a message and find out what's going on here. Ask him a couple questions. If I had to guess, was a Chinese seller went to a similar listing from an English or American seller and simply copied and pasted the listing description and we ended up with this situation. All right, let's get it. Now, I'm certainly not inviting anyone to be rude to any seller online, but you have the right to know exactly what you're buying, regardless of if it was a mistake or if it was intentional. It's against eBay's terms of service to misrepresent a product like this. But hopefully I hear back from the seller about this iPod. And so, yeah, I'm probably gonna leave it at that. If the seller does end up responding, I'll have a separate segment here. So I did hear back from the seller and basically he told me the iPod has an SSD and not an SD card, but was adamant the iPod had a 3000 milliamp hour battery. I did confront the seller claiming I had disassembled the iPod and it came with a 2000 milliamp hour battery, but I never heard back. I mean, how much did I even pay for this? 